Hello friends, this is AK Blake, and I'm coming to you tonight on the night of the lunar eclipse, which happens to fall on the winter solstice. This is the first one to fall on a winter solstice in many years, and the last one to do so for many years to come. The sun and the earth and the moon are all in line with the galactic center. What does it mean? <laughs> well, I'm sure almost all of you have heard the date 2012 and the end of the Mayan calendar and things of that nature talked about. There's a lot of hypothesis and conjecture and, and such surrounding these things. And their, uh, you know, application to everyday reality. But um, the 2012 date is actually probably not exactly right. It's just the one that most people have latched onto. It's got the most publicity. The Mayan calendar is a lunar calendar. And uh, our calendar that we use today, the Gregorian calendar, is a solar calendar. Now in translating a lunar calendar into a solar calendar, there's a large area for mistake there. A lot of area discrepancy. And uh, the end of the Mayan calendar is actually supposedly supposed to fall anywhere in a few year span of that 2012 mark. Now, there's a calendar called our galaxy that operates with great precision and clockwork and um, <laughs> This is what we call the solstices and equinoxes. They happen the same times every year. Now this solstice is a time when the days are short and the nights are long. But the solstice marks the turning point when the days begin to get longer and the light becomes brighter, lengthier days. And uh, is more than likely the date that the Mayans would have chosen to end their calendar as opposed to some random solstice without a momentous galactic alignment lunar eclipse. And it's a pretty heady, heady uh, event right here that we've got in our hands and is more than likely the actual end of the Mayan calendar. Now what does that mean? End of the Mayan calendar? Definitely not the end of the world. Maybe not even anything too terribly dramatic. Nothing you might notice tomorrow. But I think it's a great opportunity for all of us to focus our intent focus our hopes and really bring our hearts down <laughs> bring our dreams out of our heads into our hearts where we can project them out into the world via prayer via magic via whatever spiritual practice you use to connect to whatever it is that's more than ourselves more than this fleshy meat unit that we walk around in our dreaming self so whatever it is that you do, however you connect, focus that tomorrow and tonight on this momentous occasion, this gateway. This is a portal of opportunity that's open to us. There's so much change that needs to happen in the world. There's so many horrible paradigms in motion. And I feel like the only way to work to um, rectify these things and to bring forth a new era of peace and reconciliation is to work outside the system that's created those things. You can't fight fire with fire. It's a horrible, horrible uh, metaphor that's pervaded our culture for far too long. We've got to find something else other than fire. We've got to find something else other than this system. And what we found has been given to us over the course of the last several years, over the course of ages, over the course of millennia really, it's just been coming to the surface more and more into the culture in the last several years. Um, all these great techniques that have come up of uh, manifesting that which is in our highest good and for the highest good of humanity. Um, focus your intent in your heart. Bring your dreams down into your heart, out of your head. Focus those out into the world and concentrate on the outcome. Focus on what it would be like to live in that harmonious world and focus on its existence. Because it exists somewhere, somewhere in the realm of possibility. It already exists. It's yet, it's only to be called forth. And it'll take a lot of us to call it forth. It's going to take a lot of us to call it forth. Just like it takes a lot of people to pull a whale back into the ocean after it's been beached. Pull that rope. And a lot of my friends, a lot of you out there, uh, might 
consider yourselves non-joiners. Like, oh, I'm not somebody who really likes to join in. I, I do things in my own way, in my own time. Well, that's great. But um, certain opportunities, using the, like, the whale and the rope, certain opportunities and circumstances call for teamwork. And the more people pulling on that rope, the easier it is to get the whale back into the water. The quicker it can be done and the less stress the experience will bring to all involved. I mean, you might be able to get it done with like four or five strong people, Goliath type people, but the more people that do it, the more people that take part in the experience, the more energy that's exerted into it from so many different directions, the gentler, the more graceful it will be for all of us. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not some spiritual giant. I'm not some, some perfect guy. I have faults just like anybody. Um, just like everybody, um, but I'm I'm a human, and I I feel I feel invested in this world. I feel like what happens to the world has a connection with what happens to me, and if not me directly, then my nephews and my nieces and the generations to come, the children who've yet to be born even. And so it's with that thought in mind that I ask you to call forth this change with me tonight what by whatever means you prefer this is a great opportunity a great momentous occasion it's an occasion for us to call forth a shift of the ages and it's a shift that needs to be called forth by us i don't think anything's going to happen without our invested energetic input our our desire to manifest it put into action and it's action that's going to shift the ages it's not sitting back waiting for it to happen I mean, maybe that would happen, but, but by our focusing our intent, by our bringing our dreams into reality, by channeling through our hearts and projecting them through prayer, through magic, through whatever intent you desire, we can shift this age, we can change this paradigm that we're in that's been causing so much harm to our fellow humans and our planet for so long. It's time to work outside the system. It's time to work with our own system. It's a system of ancient, ancient connectedness with the divine, which is a part of us at all times. That spark lives in us, and it's been dormant for so long. It's time to flare that flame up. Let that light shine. As the sun grows brighter, may your light grow brighter. May your heart fires, fires flare. And let that flare shine out through your eyes, through the top of your head. Stand up and be a human. People will look back on this time and wonder what we did with the tools that were given to us. We've been given so many tools. If not now, then when? Why not now? Take a few minutes of your night, a few minutes of your morning, of your day, and focus with me in creating a new reality of peace harmony, love, connectivity. Blessings to you, and happy solstice.